Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome dear students, today we discuss one of the important topic of company law, directors of the company. I am Dr. Jaswan Saini, Associate Professor, Department of Law, MD University, Rohtak and we discuss directors of the company, how much important and what is the relevancy of director in the functioning of company and how the management of company controlled by the directors or can directors are responsible towards others or how the directors working in a corporate entity. As usual, we start with learning outcomes. What we learn after discuss this topic of directors of the company? After discuss this chapter, we understand the legal framework and key provisions related to the appointment, qualification and disqualification of directors in a company. What qualifications we required to become a director in a company and what are those disqualifications if we attain our candidature become zero or our candidature become absent. So, appointment, qualification, disqualification, they are the three key areas we discuss in detail in this chapter and recognize the role of board of directors in the overall management and decision making of company. Board of directors collectively responsible for each and every act of the company. And in absence of board of directors, there is no any human agency which are responsible for the functioning of company. So, board of directors always act in collective capacity. To comprehend the roles, responsibility and fiduciary duties of directors including the duty of care, skill and diligence. Some duties imposed by law on the directors and some duties impose as in moral duties and some duties are here which imposed by the society on the directors. To gain insights into the role of directors in ensuring corporate governance particularly with re regard to independent directors, audit committee and related party transaction. There are the few areas which we discuss in detail to develop our understanding about the importance of director, their working as a group in a company, how they are responsible for the functioning of company, either they are personally liable or they liable in collective capacity. Introduction of this topic of directors, we start from obtaining the certificate of incorporation as a company. Companies start their life as a living organ, as a person in the eyes of law and company is known as artificial person and the life start of the company from the certificate of its corporation. Certificate of incorporation just equivalent to date of birth certificate of a individual natural born person. So, company is considered as separate legal entity and ensuring its existence continues indefinitely. There are few things if you conceive in your mind, you become the expert in the field of corporate law. Very first, life of the company start from certificate of incorporation. Second, 
company is a separate legal entity. Separate from whom? Separate from members who, has, uh, who are the owner of the company, separate from promoters who establish the company, separate from the directors who manage the functioning of company and the life of company is indefinite unless and until the process of winding up start company is a living living company is a living organism company working like a natural born person a all natural born persons working in the capacity of individual here company working in the capacity of artificial person membership can change but there is no any effect on the company company remain as it is company survive as it is for all purposes and there is no any effect on the company members comes or going out pursue its objectives as outlined in the memorandum of association a company relies on a governing body known as the board of director so in the functioning of company one document is important document that's known as memorandum of association and this memorandum of association define how company maintain their external relation and on the basis of this document company govern their entire functioning and the board of directors also responsible to follow the guidelines given in this document that is a memorandum of association. If board of door directors going beyond this document their acts become ultra virus act and there is no any validity of such acts in the eyes of law if they are going beyond this document. So director unless explicitly authorized by the board of directors do not possess individual power to manage the company affairs. So, this particular proposition also define directors actively involved in the functioning of company in their collective capacity unless explicitly authorized by the board to act in individual capacity. In particularly in individual capacity no any power given to the director directors are only working in collective capacity as a board of directors and their function collectively as a group if they act in individual capacity their acts are illegal acts their acts are not a valid act in the eyes of law they are acts are not a legitimate acts so directors play a vital role in shaping policies establishing the company's organizational structure, arranging resources and guiding and managing the company's operation to achieve its objectives. So, board of directors are responsible for the functioning of company in the light of policies decided by member. Members decide the policies, where they decide the policies? They decide the policies in journal meeting annual journal meeting or extraordinary journal meeting and board of directors manage the functioning of company in the light of these policies decided by members. So, decision taken by members board of directors only implement these decisions according to the demand of the business according to the demand of circumstances and they play a vital role in shaping the company policies and they arrange the money for the benefit of company and they arrange the necessary requirements as and when company required being a being a artificial person. Meaning of directors if we consider directors are the person appointed to direct and supervise. Direction word indicate that some directions required from some agencies and the agencies who act on the direction that is a operating part of the company. Companies board of directors act on the direction of members 
and members in the form of policies issue the direction and they supervise the functioning. Board of directors supervise the functioning of company in the light of policies decided by members. So, Company Act 2013 does not contain an exhaustive definition of the term director. Section 234 of the Act prescribe that director means a director. The definition given in this Act that is the different definition which provided by Companies Act 1956. Director means a director appointed to the board of a company. But in the earlier Act, 1956 Act defined director means who play the role of director. So, there is a lot of difference between the definition provided by Companies Act 2013 and the definition already given in the Companies Act 1956. The major difference is here the appointed word they use in the present act. In the earlier act, they use who play the role of director. So, that is the major difference between this definition. Section 210 of the Companies Act 2013 define the board of directors or board in relation to a company means the collective body of the directors. Again, the entire act emphasizes on this point the directors act in collective capacity. There is no any power given to the director in individual capacity. So, collective body of the directors is known as board of directors. The term board of directors means a body duly constituted to direct control and supervise the affairs of the company. Here three words, one direct, second control, third supervise. Three type of control on the company through this board of directors, one who direct the functioning of company, second who control the affairs of company, third who supervise the functioning of company. So, these all three things indicate that there are some persons who are such powerful, who are competent to issue the direction and control the affairs of company and supervise the functioning of company that specialized group of persons known as board of directors. So, section 149 of the Companies Act 2013 also define important aspect related to director. The board of directors of every company shall consist of individual only. So, in the board of directors no any body corporate, no any partnership firm allowed to act as a director only individual allowed to act as a director in a board of director. Thus, no body corporate association or firm shall be appointed as director as per the mandate of section 149 of the Companies Act 2013. And section 166 of Companies Act 2013 also prohibits for delegation of power delegation of office is nothing that is delegation of power. Director not allowed to delegate their powers to anyone else. So, if delegation of office made by director that shall be white. So, these two terms one is shall another is white. These two terms indicate that directors only act in their individual capacity they are not authorized to delegate their powers to anyone. If they delegate their powers to anyone that amounts to white, that amounts to null, there is no any legitimacy behind this power. Section 149 also deals with the board of directors, the states that every company shall have a board of directors consisting of individuals and direct as directors and shall have minimum number, they define minimum number 3 in case of public limited company and in case of private limited company minimum 2 directors required to constitute a board of directors. And in case of one person company 
only one director is required to constitute a board of directors. So, section 149 clearly defined that how much minimum number of directors required to constitute the board of directors and the maximum limit also here defined that is of 15 directors. In a board of directors maximum limit is here of 15 directors, but this is not an a, a mandatory condition. In exceptional circumstances, we going beyond this limit. A company may appoint more than 15 directors after passing a special resolution. If there is a circumstances, if there is a requirement or the demand of the time, the company may going beyond this limit of 15 directors as a maximum directors after passing a special resolution in the uh, meetings. So, such class or classes of companies as may be prescribed shall have at least one woman director. So, this concept when introduced in the statute books, basically this concept for the purpose of social reform and that is also one of the act through which we introduce the social transformation in the society. When we give more and more powers to the women that leads to justice in the society. So, one women director if act in every board of directors in a public company, it means their opportunities are available to the women to participate in the decision making process. So, this is a important clause inserted in the statute book to empower the women through make their participation in the board of directors. Board of directors are nothing, they are the supervisors, they are the paid persons who take the decision for the benefit of company, on the behalf of company, for in the light of directions issued by the members in their general meeting in the form of policies. So, every company shall have at least one director who has stayed in India, India for a total period of not less than 182 days. So, this director particularly known as a resident directors who stays here certified in a calendar year 182 days. Basically, this is the requirement for those companies where there is an more than one directors relates to foreign directors group. In the another concept introduced in the light of corporate governance, the concept of independent director. Every listed public company, there is a two word, one is listed, another is public. Listed word indicate that that company is listed in the recognized stock exchange and public company means where there is a public money involved. Shall have, third word is here shall, shall means mandatory condition, compulsory part. One third of the total number of directors as independent directors and the central government may prescribe the minimum number of independent director in case of any class or classes of the public companies. So, central government being a custodian of the public money, being a regulator of this uh, act, companies act, central government may issue the direction time to time to make effective this law. So, every listed public company shall have at least one third directors in their board of directors from the group of independent directors. Independent directors are particularly such persons who not have any pecuniary interest with the company. And for the pur purpose of impartial advice and to enhance the corporate governance mechanism in the corporate bodies, we introduce this concept of independent director. And that is very useful for entire community, entire stakeholders or entire group of businesses. So, every company in existence on or before of the commencement of this act must ensure compliance. It means if a company already existed company or later on if the company established after introducing this act, 
they must ensure compliance with the requirement specified in section 149 within one year from the date of commencement. So, if you are already existing company, if you not have such type of clauses in your documents, you must ensure the compliance of latest development. That is the main crux of this entire discussion. The restriction of maximum number of direct directors shall not apply to section 8 companies. When we discuss the chapter of kinds of companies, we discuss special type of companies which establish under section 8 of the Companies Act 2013. And in such type of companies, there is no any restriction on limit on maximum number of directors. In such companies, you may be appoint any number of directors as per requirement. Section 8 companies can have more than 15 directors if they are neat, if they are, they are requirement of the mac, uh, more than 15 directors. So, number of directors basically deals by section 165, maximum limit on total number of directorship as an individual, any including any alternate directorship has been fixed at 20 companies and the maximum number of public companies in which a person can be appointed as a director shall not exceed 10 same time a person may act as a director in 20 companies, but the another proviso is applicable who restrict on this individual directorship, you not act as a director in more than 10 public limited companies. For the purpose of counting such directorship in public company, directorship in private companies that are either holding or subsidiary of a public company shall be included. If the company is a holding company and the status of the subsidiary company consider from the status of holding company. So, we also consider the status of holding company in counting of directorship. You are if a director in a subsidiary company and this subsidiary company is also under the control of a public company, you are limit of 10 here applicable. The members of a company may by special resolution, special resolution word indicate that special business deal in this particular meeting, specify any lesser number of companies in which a director of the company may act as director. So, if any company wants to be restrict the number of directorship for their own directors they may be insert this clause through special resolution. If a person accepts an appointment as a director in contravention of the above provision, he shall be punishable with a fine which shall not be less than 5000 rupees, but which may extend to 25000 rupees for every day after the first day during which the contravention continues. So, I highlight here one thing every day, where you find out such type of penalties which applicable on the basis of every day, it means the offence is continuing offence and the penalty is a penalty is a recurrent penalty. Offence is continuing offence and penalty is a recurrent penalty. So, one thing you remember, if penalty is given on the basis of day by day, it means you are responsible to pay this amount unless and until you remove the this default. So, act is very rigorous on this point, you not act as a director in more than limited period, uh, limited number of directorship as decided by statute books. So, what is the legal position of director that is a million dollar question, what is the legal position of director? Director as duly appointed individual by the company are responsible for directing, managing the company's affairs. So, there are the 
two persons one is known as members second is board of director except these there is no any human agents working in the company no doubt employees are working in the company but they are working in different capacity the capacity here we consider members who decide the policy board of directors who act in the light of these policies so sometime directors act as agent sometime directors act as managing partner and sometime directors act as an organ of body corporate so we discuss each and everything in detail here what is the real capacity of the director director act as agent director are viewed as agent of the company for the conduct of its business a company cannot act itself company act through its directors it means directors are responsible for the functioning of company company being a artificial person not itself company required some human persons for discharging the function of company director act on the behalf of the company they are not act in their individual capacity they act in collective capacity or on the behalf of company and acting on behalf of the company make the company liable for it and not themselves directors act on the behalf of company for the benefit of company in the light of policies decided by members but company is liable for such acts in limited extent directors are personally liable we discuss later on such exceptional circumstances where directors are personally liable if they are going beyond their powers which authorized by statute books or the documents like your memorandum of association or article of association however directors are personally liable in following circumstances if they enter into any contract on their own name as per law they are bound to be enter into the contract on the name of company company is artificial person company enter into contract on its own name through the route of board of directors but if directors enter into the contract on their own name they are personally liable if they mention the name of the company incorrectly in such cases directors are personally liable if terms of the contract is not clear then directors are personally liable where they exceed the authority exceed the authority here means if they are going beyond the powers which authorized to them that's going beyond their limit in such cases they are personally liable in case of negligence in case of offense in case of omission or act intentionally in these four cases law never permit to anyone to give any excuse so they are personally liable if in any circumstances there we found that directors are negligent directors commit any offense and they are intentionally doing such acts which are illegal acts so directors are acting as agent because they act on the behalf of someone else directors sometimes treat as trustee they must account for all monies over which they exercise control it means they are liable for all such monies which are in their control and they apply this money for the benefit of company on the behalf of company for the purpose of company their acts and dealings must be for the benefit of the company so if their acts or dealings for the purpose of someone else other than company or not for the benefit of company in such cases directors are personally liable and directors are not treated as trustee in case of trust it means we act on the behalf of other or act in good faith they must exercise their power honestly in the interest of company so if you act honestly that's the requirement in each and every relation 
each and every transaction and here you act honestly for the benefit of whom benefit of company and you act in collective capacity so these few things establish that directors as trustees they act on the behalf of other and they are hold the money on the faith of others and they are accountable towards the shareholders not an individual shareholder shareholder as a group not a section of shareholders for misuse of the power they could be liable as trustees so these things establish that directors are up to some extent treated as trustee up to some extent they are treated as agent and one leading case decided by madras high court in the year of 1966 and ramaswami ayer versus brahmaya and company it was held that directors are trustee for the company and with reference to their powers for applying funds of the company and for misuse of the power they could be rendered liable as trustee and on their death the cause of action lie against their legal heirs so this case is leading case on this point which established that they act as a trustee trustee for whom trustee for the money in their hands on the behalf of company and after the death of the directors legal action not automatically comes to be and their legal heirs are responsible for such money so this case is known as leading case on this point and you are need to be develop your understanding that they are up to some extent as a trustee some to some extent as a agent and sometimes directors are treated as managing partners director represent the shareholders to conduct the business of the company on their behalf directors act on the behalf of entire group of shareholders they enjoy vast power of management so there is no one is above than the board of directors so they are the supreme power so they enjoy the vast power of the management over the company and perform many functions which are in the nature of proprietary for example allotment of shares raising of loans investment of funds of the company so these all things indicate that directors are the managing partners they decide the decision they decide the matters they decide the functioning of the company in the light of policies which decided by members and these functions in itself prove that they are act as a supreme body of the decision making but if we consider in the real sense either they are agent either they are the trustee or the managing partner we found in real sense directors are not the agent completely nor the trustee nor the managing partner the position of director is combine all the three and more than that also basically directors are some paid persons who are responsible for the functioning of company and directors are such persons who are 24 hours readily available to put behind bar, put behind the bar on the name of company in fact the directors are paid commercial men managing a trading concern for the benefit of themselves and of all the shareholders in it how they are benefit themselves because they charge the money they charge the remuneration for the same and that's the remuneration for their own benefit and they manage all the functioning of company for the shareholders benefit so when we use this term they act on the behalf of company it means they are agent when we use the position of directors they act for the shareholders that's a fiduciary relation established here on the part of directors supreme court of india also confirmed the fiduciary nature of directors position in the case of dell and carrington investment private limited versus pk prathapan this case decided in the year of 2004 by supreme court 
and in this case court held that that is the fiduciary duty performed by the directors. So, fiduciary duty always based on the faith. So, women director which deals by section 149 prescribe the following classes of companies shall appoint at least one women director and these classes are here every listed company, every other public company having paid up share capital of 100 crore or turnover is 300 crore. Those companies are bound to appoint one women director in their board of directors. Respective companies shall comply with such provision with a period of 6 months from the dates of its, date of its incorporation. If there is no any already you have the women director, you must ensure the position of women director in the board of directors within 6 months. Otherwise, you commit an offence because if we not follow the statutory provision that amounts to offence. However, any intermittent vacancy of women director shall be filled up by the board of board at the earliest but not later than immediate next board meeting. If there is an interim vacancy, you immediately fill up with the another women directors or up to the next meeting you should ensure the presence of women director in the board of directors. So, appointment of directors deal by section 152 of the Companies Act 2013. First director of company are usually appointed by promoters in the manner defined in article of association. I again and again emphasize here there are the two documents one is known as article of association and another is known as memorandum of association. These two documents basically define the functioning of company or the journey of the company always based on these documents. So, first directors appointed by promoters as per the manner defined in article of association, their names generally given in the article of association generally not in all cases. 90 9 percent cases names are reflected in article of association. Where article do not provide for the appointment of first directors, the signatories of memorandum who are individuals and in case of one person company an individual being member shall be deemed. This word in itself prove that the position of director signatories also deal as director shall be deemed to be the first director of the company subject to the regulation of the company's article. If name are different there is no problem, if names are not given in the article of association then who are the signatories they will be deemed to be first director. The first director can hold office only till the first annual journal meeting of the company. And journal meeting is the that platform where we up election, we perform the election and removal of directors. So, up to first AGM they hold the office, after that the new persons who are duly appointed in the board of directors, they act as per the policies as per the documents and first directors only hold office up to first AGM. They are replaced by the directors appointed by the company at the journal meeting. So, journal provisions relating to appointment of directors that is here except as provided in the act every director shall be appointed by the company in journal meeting. First directors no doubt appointed by promoters, but after that directors are basically elected in board uh, journal meeting where act requires or specifies any other manner of appointment of directors, the appointment may be made in such manner. If documents in support of any other manner, you must follow such manner. If documents are silent on this point regarding manner of appointment of directors, then you follow the rules or statutory requirements as defined by the acts, rules and regulations. 
director identification number is mandatory in modern circumstances in present scenario and 2006 is the year where Ministry of Corporate Affairs introduced this DIN number. Nowadays, no one allowed to act as, act as a director unless and until he obtained the DIN number, director identification number. Every uh, person proposed to be appointed as director shall furnish his DIN number and declaration that he is not disqualified to become a director under the act. So, our statute is very beautifully impose the obligation on the part of this individual person who is interested to act as a director. You declare, you declare here that you are not disqualified by any law or any court to act as a director. So, declaration in itself prove that you fulfill the all requirements. A person appointed as a director shall on or before the appointment give his consent to hold the office of director and file it within 30 days. So, this word consent basically indicates that as per section 3 of Indian Majority Act 1875, the only major persons are allowed to convey their consent and consent always given by major person. So, this particular word consent indicate that director must be a major person and 149 and 152 also in the favor of that only individual become a director, no any partnership firm, no any body corporate allowed to become a director. So, appointment of directors by members. The subsequent directors in the case of public limited company are appointed by the members in the journal meeting. So, these two words by the members in the journal meeting, it means indicate that that is the power in the hands of members to elect and remove the directors. Section 152 provides that unless the article provide for the retirement of all directors at every annual journal meeting, at least two-third directors of the total number of directors of a public limited company shall be persons who shall be subject to retirement by rotation. So, retirement by rotation is applicable as per section 152 and must be appointed by the company in journal meeting. So, that is clearly indicate that this power in the hands of members to appoint and remove the directors. The remaining director in case of any such company and the directors of private company may be appointed in accordance with the provision of the company's article. The company's article of association is that document who define how we govern the internal relation, appointment and removal or election or removal of directors basically deals by this document, governed by this document. In the absence of any such provision in the article or in case of default, in so appointing directors, these directors shall also be appointed by the company in journal meeting. So, again and again each and every provision in the favor that directors are appointed in journal meeting, directors are appointed by members. So, section 152 clause 6, retirement of directors by rotation. In case of a public company, out of two-third directors, so this term is very important, liable to retire by rotation. Rotation means turn by turn. One-third or the nearest number of one-third shall retire at every subsequent annual journal meeting. The election of directors or removal of directors only in the journal meeting unless and until there are special circumstances. The turn of retirement shall be determined by the length of office. Length of office define or decide or determined on which date the directors are retired. Those who have been longest in office shall retire first. 
as between persons who become directors on the same day, retirement may be decided by lot. If more than two or more than two persons appointed on same day, then draft lot decide who retire first. Government companies have been exempted from this retirement by rotation through this notification which introduced in June 5, 2015 from the applicability of this section. Accordingly, directors in government companies are not liable to retire by rotation. This particular provision is not applicable on government companies. Section 152 clause 7, the general meeting at which a director retire as aforesaid the company may fill up the vacancy by appointing the retiring director or some other person. It means if you retire in the same meeting, you may be fill up the vacancy in the same meeting. That is allowed. There is no problem in this, in this way. Process of retirement, if the vacancy of the retiring director is not so fill up in the same meeting or adjourned meeting, retiring director shall be deemed to have been reappointed. So, you are supposed to be appointed a new director. If you not appoint a new director, it means you uh, that is deemed to be reappointed and the adjourned meeting except in the following cases. In previous meeting, resolution of reappointment was put to vote, but it was lost. If in earlier meeting, the resolution lost in such cases, that is not deemed fit case for reappointment. In writing, if the director showing their unwillingness to act as a director, in such cases not deemed fit to be reappointment. And if due to any reason, that is become a disqualified or not qualified to become a director. In such cases also, that is not a fit case for reappointment and become disqualified after appointment in one resolution not appoint more than one director. That is against the public policy, against the logic also. If in one resolution you appoint more than one director, we fail to consider that how many votes given to whom. So, how many votes the secure by one or second, that is very impossible, impractical. So, due to this one, in one resolution you are not supposed to appoint more than one director. If the resolution is unanimous resolution, in such cases there is no problem. So, appointment of director other than a retiring director, in such cases you gave a 14 days notice those intended person convey the notice of 14 days to the company before the journal meeting has to deposit a sum of rupees of 1 lakh rupees is a refundable security. This is way if you want to be contest the election of director and notice is also very important to the no, uh, company and in the journal meeting you appointed and here refundable amount of 1 lakh rupees also there for deal with the same. Appointment of directors by the board. The board of directors may make the following appointment which define in section 161 additional or co-opted directors. Generally the powers of appointment of directors given to the members in general meeting, but there are some exceptional powers also in the hands of board of directors in the form of section 161. If authorized by the article, it means article of association if in the favor that board of directors may appoint any person other than a person who fails to get appointed as a director in a journal meeting as an additional director at any time. This is the condition here. If you lost your resolution for appointment, in such cases you are not appointed as additional director. Additional director shall hold office up to the date of the next AGM. Casual vacancy that also deal by section 161 clause 4. A casual vacancy occurring amongst the directors, this casual vacancy may be created due to death, due to resignation or otherwise. 
in such cases if casual vacancy create that also fill up by the board of directors and the unless and until the different procedure defined by the article of association you follow the well established procedure which followed by the companies in their practice the person so appointed shall hold office only up to the time his predecessors would have continued so one another type of director is here alternate director and this vacancy also fill up by the board of directors and they authorize if article of association in the favor of the same a newly appointed director shall act during his absence such a director will vacate the office immediately on the return of original director so basically in place of the earlier director this alternate director acts and this alternate director immediately vacate the office as and when the earlier director join the office nominee director which define in section 161 clause 3 and that is also subject to article of association board may appoint any person as a director nominated by any institution in pursuance of the provision of any law or the time being enforcement of the any contractual terms or central government or the state government or the creditors if in the favor that you appoint a nominee director that you should be appoint a nominee director so appointment of director by the tribunal also that's defined in section 241 if any complaint of the members for oppression and mismanagement tribunal also authorize under section 241 to appoint a director in a board of directors of any company and the ground of ground on which such a petition can be filed in conduct of the affairs of the company the manner oppressive or any member of the company prejudicial to the interest of the company or public interest so tribunal may a point tribunal may issue the direction for appointment of a director as a uh, in the board of director of any company appointment of directors by the central government that also defined in section 167 central government being a custodian of the public money being a custodian of this companies act being a regulator through ministry of corporate affairs in on the su moto or on complaint may be appoint any director in the board of directors of any company section 162 appointment of directors to be voted individually two or more persons as directors by a single resolution is wide i already discussed the same resident director said define in section 149 clause 3 and here stay required minimum 182 days in previous calendar year director elected by small shareholders that's deal by section 151 it means one directors in every public limited company from this group also and small shareholder means a shareholder holding share of nominal value of not more than 20000 or such other sum as may be prescribed these shareholders known as small shareholders and they appoint one director from this group and particularly this director appointed to protect the interest of small shareholders and appointment of independent directors that's defined in section 149 clause 6 a director other than a managing director or a whole time director or a nominee director that's known as independent director and which type of persons not allowed to act as an independent director that's defined here that's a list who hold 2% or more share that's of the total voting power that's not a independent director ceo director of any ngo npo that received 25% or more of its receipts from the company that's not treated as independent director so if any pecuniary interest or relationship establish between the company and the directors that person not allowed to be appointed as independent director in the company so number of independent director here at least one third of the total number of directors act as independent director is in a public limited company who cover under the particular limit of 
companies. So, tenure of independent directors that is defined in section 149 clause 10, independent director shall hold office for a term up to 5 consecutive years of the board of the company and eligible for reappointment. So, two things very important, one is term, second is eligible for reappointment and liability of independent directors that is defined in section 149 clause 12 that is defined here independent director not being a promoter or key managerial personnel shall be held liable only in respect of such acts or omission or commissions by company which had occurred with his knowledge. If he prove these acts without his knowledge perform then he is free from the liability. And remuneration of independent director defined in section 197 and 198 that is entitled for their seating fees, seating fees is given. Vacation of office of director, office of director shall become vacant in following cases. If he occur any disqualification, if he become in sound mind or insolvent or declare convicted by any court or tribunal that is become a uh, vacate. It means position become vacate. Removal of directors defined in section 169, a company may by ordinary resolution remove the director before the expiry of his terms. So, director appointed on the principle of proportional representation that is also requirement of section 163 and special notice shall be required for any resolution to remove a director. So, basically a special resolution required to remove a directors. Appointment of directors through ordinary resolution, but removal always for with special resolution because before completion of term you remove and removal by the tribunal, there is no any limit on the powers of tribunal. Tribunal may remove the directors on any ground if they found fit case. So, such a director when removed by the tribunal, they are not authorized to claim any compensation. And if we summarize this entire discussion of the directors, we found that directors in a company hold a multifaceted role balancing their duties as agents, trustees and commercial managers. Their primary responsibility is to act in the best interest of the company and its stakeholders. So, they act in collective capacity and they are accountable towards the entire group of shareholders or entire group of stakeholders and fiduciary nature of the directors role is a fundamental in nature. Fundamentally, they are governed by the fiduciary relations and fiduciary relation based on good faith and the best interest of the company, of the shareholders and stakeholders. And company law emphasize the importance of the director in shaping the success and ethical conduct of companies. Company is an artificial com person and company act through some agents. These agents are board of directors and board of directors are if good in nature, they discharge their function honestly. It means they are a best management of the company. Directors are responsible to comply the regulatory provision and their implication in modern business practices. The ethical codes are applicable on directors. Thank you. Thank you.